of uh, all the construction professionals and especially being an engineer's day uh, we have been organizing some special lectures uh, today we have on vastu shastra tomorrow morning between 11 to 12 we have on uh, rainwater harvesting uh, we thought that uh, apart from uh, you know dealing on purely technical subjects we also need to have uh, some kind of idea on general topics uh, but at the same time uh, very critical topics especially when we look at uh, uh, the way other aspects also influence our lives uh, i am sure that uh, this would be very interesting uh, for all of us to know uh, about vastu shastra as well as uh, tomorrow's uh, topic on uh, rainwater harvesting because we all know that uh, there are a number of initiatives that have been taken across the country to conserve water so today we uh, would be dealing on this but before that let me just uh, give you a brief introduction of uh, the ramco cement as such as all of you know because uh, ramco cement doesn't need any introduction but uh, for the benefit of uh, the customers who have joined us uh, let me just give a brief this thing. we have been interacting with uh, major uh, project customers uh, across the country uh, who are dealing with uh, various kinds of uh, construction uh, which is uh, uh, bridges uh, highways dams uh, multi storied buildings and uh, we have uh, various types of uh, works also you know you look at uh, the precast works the pre stressed uh, works uh, especially the precast uh, uh, works that is going on in buildings as well as the superstructure of the bridges so when we look at uh, the different type of structures that is being implemented across the country and uh, the various types of concrete that is being used it has become imperative that uh, the quality of concrete needs to be defined in such a way that uh, we are able to select the right kind of materials which go on to constitute concrete so uh, before we select the materials for concrete or decide upon the workmanship it is very important that we define the requirements of concrete which we have been propagating over the last uh, few months to all our, all the construction professionals because uh, normally we are satisfied with only the grade of concrete being specified you know could be either m20 or m30 m40 but it is also equally important that we understand uh, the workability that is required because uh, there are uh, construction projects where the kind of workability that is required are different like say for example in precast works the workability that is required would be lesser as compared to a pumpable concrete where the work workability that is required is much higher because the concrete needs to be flowable so when we look at this characteristics of concrete Uh, we also need to understand that it needs a proper definition only by a proper definition we will be able to uh, you know define the various practices that has to be implemented at site and that is where the degree of quality control comes into play uh, because the degree of quality control will vary from project to project uh, as well as uh, based on the definition of concrete that is being used so that is where uh, we have been getting uh, in very good uh, input from various construction majors whether it's itd cementation a tata housing last night tobro uh, haldia development authority uh, and of course our brand is approved in various major uh, metro projects so we have been giving uh, we have been supplying cement to this projects and uh, most of these projects uh, again the exposure conditions would be different you know some of this would be near the sea near the water bodies and some of them uh, would be near uh, places which are highly polluted uh, some of them would be having underground works where there is a lot of sulfate and chloride come into contact so that is where uh, we will find that uh, various aspects of concrete uh, ranging from compressive strength uh, to workability to durability plays a vital role so that is why the definition of concrete also becomes all the more important so based on this we have customized the cement also based on the various requirements of concrete uh, in fact uh, we have uh, uh, portland pozzolana cement portland slag cement uh, which of course in general is categorized as blended cement where uh, blending material has been uh, used and the reason for usage of blending material is to lower the heat of hydration and at the same time enhance the durability you know visa vis uh, when we compare it with ordinary portland cement 53 grade which has a very high heat of hydration so when we look at the blended cements we have uh, this uh, various types of blended cements uh, ppc and psc we have the brands like ramco super crete cement ramco super fine ramco super grade kartik super plus ramco samudra and ramco super steel uh, so ramco super crete cement is the cement which has been uh, designed specifically for concreting works you know especially for roof concreting uh, where the idea has been uh, to manufacture a cement 
with a high rate of compressive strength and at the same time have a low heat of hydration. And that is where Ramco Superfeed Cement plays a vital role. Uh, we have the Ramco Super Fine Cement, especially in the eastern part of the country, Ramco Super Grade Cement again, uh, which is uh, our flagship brand, which has been in the market for quite a number of years, uh, which has been used in number of applications. We have the slag cements, Ramco Samudra and Ramco Super Steel, which again uh, is specified for specific underground works where uh, there is a specific requirement of slag cement. Uh, there we have been able to uh, cater to the requirements of various uh, project customers. So and as well as individual house builders. So that is where uh, we have this uh, six types of blended cement which is being uh, manufactured. And then we have the ordinary Portland cement because ordinary Portland cement is also equally important, especially when we look at the various kinds of infrastructure projects that is being executed in the country, uh, especially the ready mix concrete units uh, where they need uh, concrete of various requirements. Like say, for example, we have the 43, 53 grade, 43 grade infra, 53 grade infra, where again, one needs to have a high slump retention. You know, that is where uh, we find that uh, the slump retention that is required uh, depends on various kind of projects as well as the time that is taken for the delivery of concrete uh, uh, to the customer end. So that is where the infra cement uh, plays a vital role. And we have been able to achieve that because uh, especially in cities like Bangalore, you will find that uh, you know the transportation time of concrete is higher. And that is where uh, we need to balance both uh, the slump retention as well as the compressive strength. And at the same time, as we all know, whenever ordinary Portland cement is being used at site, again, there is a addition of uh, blending materials at site itself, whether it be fly ash or slag. So when those are being added, uh, you know, the mixed design becomes all the more complex and that is where we need to do a number of trials. And, uh, uh, you know, we have the chemical admixtures also that is being added into concrete. So when we add chemical admixtures, the properties of concrete change. So we need to understand how it changes, so for which we need to do a number of trials. And there are certain type of admixtures which may be compatible with a particular brand of cement, particular type of cement. So before using any chemical admixtures, it is uh, all the more important that we check the cement admixture compatibility. Uh, we have the sulfate resisting cement, Ramco Super Post again, which is being used for specific application wherein there is a high percentage of sulfates in the soil. And uh, a special cement for precast works, the Ramco Superfast, which has been designed uh, for uh, getting a high rate of gain of strength, high early strength, in fact, uh, because high one day compressive strength uh, is very critical whenever uh, the precast works are being designed. So that is where Ramco Superfast comes into play. And uh, we have been able to cater to the requirement of various uh, precast segment, both in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka, where the requirement has been. Uh, that uh, you know the uh, mold has to be removed at the earliest and the number of blocks per bag has to be uh, more you know as to because that is where the economy comes into play and they have been able to get that uh, with the reduced uh, breakage so that is where we have been able to help the precast segment and uh, number of precast uh, who have been using our uh, ramco superfast so these are the 12 uh, brands of cement which is being used uh, by most of our customers, and that is where we have all this. So we also have a dry mix plant at Sri Parambudur, where we are manufacturing dry mix products, you know, ranging from tile fix, block fix, super fine, tile grout. And all this is specifically catering to the non-structural applications. Because when you look at dry mix plant as such, uh, we have established in technical collaboration with MTEP Germany, and we have been able to uh, have this various products, the dry mix uh, products. Uh, which cater to the various things. So, uh, all this is made possible because of uh, a very good research and development center that we have, uh, which is equipped with sophisticated equipments. Uh, because, as all of us know, that uh, when you have a research and development center, it is very essential that we have uh, the modern equipments for evaluating various kinds of materials. Because until unless the evaluation is not correct, not yeah. Uh, sir, actually, Arjuna, sir, is trying to uh, connect. Okay. Are we able to hear him, sir? No, I'm not able to hear him. Uh, sir, we are sorry, we are not able to hear you yet. Okay, we'll, we'll get back, sir. Please continue, sir. So we have the Ramco Research and Development Center where uh, we have a lot of uh, modern equipments for evaluating, say, for example, uh, the particle size distribution. Uh, we have the, uh, you know, in fact, uh, if you look at mercury intrusion, porosimeter is there. Uh, for studying the particle size distribution uh, of uh, various blending materials because uh, when we look at property of cement and concrete uh, 
uh, it is the packing uh, you know ability you know when we look at concrete we are using different materials you know cement sand aggregates which are of different sizes and it needs to be packed properly so that you have a, a material which is having a high density and for having this uh, you know you need to ensure that uh, the particle size distribution uh, is also studied so especially when we look at cement or any other blending materials we need to understand the particle size distribution for which uh, we have the necessary equipments so that is where uh, you know and at the same time uh, many of the organizations have uh, lauded us for the uh, various initiatives that we have taken in the area of uh, environment in the area of uh, leadership in technology and energy efficiency and utilization of blending materials because that is very important and uh, of course, we have been uh, given this awards, uh, which is one of the uh, few uh, plant. In fact, uh, that is the only plant which has got the four leaves award in the country. You know, if you look at uh, the various cement plants, it has been ranked based on uh, this uh, important uh, criteria, and we have been able to achieve that. So that is what uh, all about uh, the Ramco cements and the various kinds of awards which we have been able to get in the area of energy efficiency, utilization of blending materials, and the latest. Uh, uh, equipments that has been introduced uh, by us for evaluating as well as for testing. Uh, that's because uh, even if you look at the cement manufacturing process, also we have been able to uh, introduce the various uh, equipments uh, ranging from you know from mining. In fact, we have the surface miners uh, which are being installed uh, so that uh, you know it is very environmental friendly. You know where uh, much of the drilling and blasting is avoided and. Uh, the mining of uh, limestone is done in such a way that it is environmental friendly and then of course we have the vertical roller mill where again the uh, it is done in such a way that uh, the particle size distribution is controlled so if you look at uh, from whether it is from the testing perspective or from the manufacturing perspective we have been able to uh, collaborate the customer feedback uh, with all this so that is where a strong collaboration of r d uh, manufacturing ability and customer feedback uh, comes into play and that is where uh, we have been able to do a number of uh, initiatives uh, so I, I hope that uh, you know if you have any kind of uh, mixed design to be done uh, you know you can always define the quality of concrete your requirement and you can uh, help us know about it and we can do those mixed design at our r d center and uh, we will help you to arrive at an optimum mix. In fact, that is very important in many of the projects. When we look at the mix itself, uh, we are aiming for an optimum mix. And at the same time, uh, it has to satisfy all the quality requirements. So uh, for that, we can help uh, because uh, we have been, we have got a very good database of about a lot of uh, So we have been able to have that uh, at our place and we will be able to share with you based on the requirement so we would be able to give that service and at the same time our maze team uh, they can visit your construction sites oh. at various places in the country and uh, we can also render uh, services in terms of concrete tube testing uh, checking the workability of concrete and help you to make a good quality concrete at site itself so uh, we can run a service in those areas so if you look at uh, the customer service we will be able to do that so uh, those are the kind of services that uh, we are offering as far as uh, the field uh, situation is concerned okay. i think uh, architect Tapana, sir have joined in again uh, through a different laptop just want to uh, architect, sir, are you there yeah mr anil kumar can yes, you yeah, now I can hear you, sir. Perfect. Yeah, welcome back, sir. So we have our speaker who has joined us, and before we go on to the talk, let me introduce today's speaker, architect Aparna Siddhesh Pandey, who has joined us in spite of his busy schedule uh, from uh, Bangalore. So let me just give a brief introduction of the speaker. Uh, in fact, uh, he completed his BR from UVAC Bangalore University, completed his MR from IIT Kharagpur. He is at present an architect, partner of Mrs. Aparna and Nirmala Architects and Associates at Bangalore since 1975. He worked as visiting faculty in the Department of Architecture, UVC Bangalore and DMS College of Engineering, Bangalore for nine years. He worked on spatial planning process in architectural designing, a component of Vastu principles of Rajas quality in human being at IIT Kharagpur. He has revived more than 600 sick industrial units uh, based on Vastu principles in India and abroad. He has set right more than 1,800 residential units with respect to health, wealth, and social conditions based on Vastu principles under free consultancy service program. 
he was he has been awarded with indira gandhi priyadarshini award in 1993 for reviving six industries in india so we have a speaker for the day uh, who would be able who would be sharing with us a very important component uh, you know as far as the building construction is concerned so thanks sir for joining us uh, in spite of your busy schedule uh, so let me once again uh, invite uh, professor appanna d siddesh pande uh, to share his experience on uh, vastu shastra with all of us and uh, at the end of the session we can also have the question answer session so over to you sir yeah thank you very thank much. You so much thank you very much uh, at an outset i would like to thank i would like to thank the ramco cements limited uh, and uh, mr sheshank sharma the agm uh, mr anil kumar pillai mr gm i mean the gm and uh, the person who came and contacted me mr dinesh hegde i mean i'd like to thank all of them for having given me an opportunity to talk about this my pet subject which i started as a research work uh, at iit kharagpur in 1973 and today i am in a position to tell you something about the scientific uh, i can say the analogy ab about the vastu shastra okay <clears throat> well uh, i would like to tell about my office uh, in, in few sentences myself and uh, uh, miss nirmala uh, shri hari uh, we joined together in 1975 and started aparna and nirmala this uh, architecture firm uh where we have been <coughs> uh what you call contemplating this subject in designing the building and convincing the 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 today's population because this has become uh, the talk of the nation not just the talk of the town it has become the talk of the nation and it is such a wonderful subject and which has been in in my opinion either it has been neglected or in totality of architecture somewhere it is a missing link about which whatever the time has been given to me uh, by gramco cements i would like to share my knowledge with you all thank you very much again once again i would like to thank the gramco cements and i would like to start my subject <clears throat> well see the first slide what i am going to show it is about about certain negativity about, uh, about the health of the human being where the science says over 95% of the world is unhealthy what does it mean why 95% of the world is unhealthy that means Uh, the person the scientist wanted to say 100% actually in reality because i went through the that full research work he wanted to say 100% unhealthy but to be on safer side he said 95% of the world is unhealthy well if this is so how this is related with the architecture is a very important the question mind boggling question and the same kind of thing which went into my mind in 1972 when i was doing my research for pg i am not a doctor holder or doctorate holder in the pg because everybody was saying in olden days the main door should be on the eastern side or northern side i mean some thing you know which we considered as the andhashruddha or what you call superstition and that went into my mind is there any science in that and that's how i started doing some research that there should be some scientific analogy in our architecture in our ancient architecture i mean you can call it as indian architecture or hindu architecture whatever it may be the caste and creed don't come here the religion don't come here the real architecture which is for the human being which is for the society for the good of the society and that which i study and i would like to share with you now <clears throat> coming to the human body human body is wearing some dress that dress is it required 
very important thing because you if you see any jungle animal starting from even insect an ant or termite to the elephant they are not wearing anything then why the human being is it necessary to wear the bunion the shirt the muffler in uh, winter you require again uh, coat some pullover all these things are they required when they are so happy without these things why the human being is required human being requires all these things is a very very important thing because architecture starts at home from home the bunion is a cover the shirt is a cover and again the architect has given you one more cover as a shelter keeping you away from the the main nature what we call the basic five elements because man needs man needs basically three levels of comforts three levels one is the spatial comfort about the space what i have shown in the slide here i hope you are all seeing the slide can you see the slide yes sir we can we can see the slide oh, it is visible yeah. very good very good the spatial comfort this is about the space the next is physical comfort that is about what are the physical basic gadgets basic it may be a, a mat to lie down it may be a table to sit and work it may be a chair ordinary chair i don't say very you know highly in um, one foot thick cushion and one foot thick the back backing or something it is the the basic need you may require for example if a, somebody is uh, staying in nagpur or in delhi you definitely require a fan in cities which the physical comforts require then the third one is the spiritual comfort what is that spiritual comfort how do you get the spiritual comfort spiritual comfort is basically with the the mental ability mental comfort the mind which has to be always under peace p e a c e peace and that has to be acquired by only the five elements in nature what are the five elements what are the basic five elements bhumi aap tejo vayu nabha sir if i use these sanskrit words in iit kharagpur i would have been i mean i think uh, uh, should have been thrown out long time back but everything i had to translate into english and make it a science the five elements bhumi means the earth which is giving us the energies the magnetic through the magnetic force and through the gravitational force up up is liquid what you call the hydraulic energy through the humidity through the water we are getting the energy third is teja teja is light and heat you get the thermal energy and you get the electromagnetic energy through light vayu the air the gaseous energy the wind energy and the last one is nabha the sound and these five elements are nothing but the sources of energies and these five sources are outside the building what the architect has designed now it is is it not the architect's duty welcome those energies which are very much required for the human body these five elements therefore it is the duty of an architect to study these energies and how he is going to welcome them accept them in the the physical object what we call physical object in our indian language it is called vastu therefore there is a science called vastu shastra where the human being is going to stay there happily comfortably with respect to his health wealth and social conditions these three if they are taken into consideration taken care how they are going to keep 
the person happy within that physical object, I am telling you, our architecture is done. But are we doing it today? You will come to know later, next stage. Next, uh, next slide. Well, <clears throat> here, the, here the science of Vastu Shastra. The Vastu Shastra, when a client comes to an architect, he has got so many requirements. There are his various requirements. They are the requirements have to be completely analyzed. Analyzed. And then they are put in a particular form or composed. You have to compose them in a required fashion with respect to the individual requirements. Therefore, we call it as the Tantra Jnana, the Tantra Jnana, that means by when, when, you are, when you are designing a building, you have to use the technicalities. That is called Tantra Jnana. And you are using the mathematics. There are proportions, length, breadth, and height. With a particular proportion only you have to do. I can't give a bedroom. Just mentioning the area, if somebody wants, say about around, around 140 square feet of area, bedroom is sufficient. I can't give it as 14 by 10. Or I can't give just 12 by 12, 144 square feet. Or at the same time, I can't make it even about, uh, say, 9 into 16. Because there is a definite proportion with respect to the his requirement, physical requirements. Therefore, the mantra then or the mathematics, it plays very important role. Though I am using the Sanskrit words, because there is no definite this kind of analogy in architecture in other countries. I mean, I want it found so far. The third one is vinyasa. What is vinyasa? The vinyasa is nothing but the composition, the organization of various activities. The activity starts with an action. The action, the multiple actions will create an activity. Supposing I want to prepare tea in the kitchen, I have to go to the different shelves, collect the material, go near the kitchen platform, and I have to switch on the stove, put the water, collect the vessel, put the water, and this total preparation requires so many actions and activities, and in total, this is called activity configuration. And that activity configuration requires the, the same way, if you take a bedroom, if you take a kitchen or cooking area, dining area, any area, what we call, which requires a certain, I mean, a certain amount of space in a particular fashion, length and breadth proportion with height. That is called vinyasa. Therefore, these three things, Tantra Jnana, Mantra Jnana and Vinyasa are the, the different stages of the architectural design process. In this slide, I'm, I would like to tell you about man requires the comfort levels at the spatial, physical, and temporal, which I have already told you. But the, in the spatial, what do you call the comfort level, achievement of comfort level, there is vast research. How the minimum space can be achieved, I mean, the, uh, the efficiency in the minimum space can be achieved. The example itself, I can tell you, the aeroplane cockpit is a really wonderful design where the pilots, pilots are capable to do anything. See, they even they can eat the food while, while the, um, uh, driving the aeroplane, while piloting the aeroplane. They can have anything, all the facilities in a very, very small cockpit, how they can achieve the same way even in our the building also today the apartment concept villa concept 
or even your row housing concept concepts all these are all the achievements especially with respect to spatial aspect the second is physical with minimum basic things man can be comfortable you have got different different cooling systems different types of the cleaning systems i mean all these things there is lot of research which has been taken place in spatial and physical but coming to the temporal the man's the temper or man's mind man's the mind the stability or the mental stability there somehow the distress or you can call it as you know the imbalance imbalanced situation has been that is because of the vastu which i have proved i will tell you <clears throat> see the man i mean from monkey to man with a computer i have shown here i hope you all can see yes we can see it we can okay. see it okay and if if a man from monkey to man what we say it is called the civilization process or we can say evolution process in this evolution process who was with completely i mean he was a naked person earlier he was he was not even wearing the chappals he was not wearing even the, he was a barefooted person but today he he is with the complete cover on his body and also there is a cover over his body what we call that is the shelter or vastu whether now this is required or not i would like to give you a very very fine example here <clears throat> you compare the human being with respect to the jungle animal with respect to the energy the human being energy is much much level compared to even his weight or his height the animal if you take the energy level is very high the swiftness is very high in animals the health i am telling you my dear friends have you come across any ailment with, with the jungle animals have you seen any elephant with tb i am talking about jungle animal not the tamed one have you come across cancer with the jungle animals any kidney problem any i mean animal any animals with uh, the tb asthma cancer you you name it name the ailment it is only with the human being why this also proved we to go into this science and there is something and which is being neglected or completely even forgotten therefore how the jungle animals can be completely happy if the the cub the cub's life is fixed 95 years guaranteed unless it meets with an accident or somebody kills it otherwise 95 years nobody can touch it if the tiger gives the cub sorry 22 years guaranteed why not the human being what is wrong with the human being where is where he is going wrong it is because of shelter the required five elements he is not availing them which is which are available in nature outside the building now considering these things or taking these five elements in the building the human comfort is the science of architecture where ar architect has to definitely ponder he has to consider he has to study he has to analyze and some of he should try to get all these five elements in the required quantity again all these five elements in the required quantity within the shelter is a science of vastu shastra is the only architecture if there there is any other architecture i am ready to take a challenge today's architecture today's architecture four walls and a roof with some cosmetic treatment outside is it the architecture what for we are what for we are learning architecture what we are for, what for we are executing the architecture is ultimately for the human comfort with respect to the 
three qualities. This is very, very important. <clears throat> As I told you, spatial comfort, as per the previous slide, you require spatial comfort, physical comfort, and spiritual comfort. The spatial comfort, it relates, it connects with the kinetic energy in human being. If the kinetic energy is quite well, his spatial comfort will be excellent. The physical comfort, that is, his mass, his total resistance power. I am sitting on a chair here where, while talking to you people, my friends. I am sitting on a chair. No, I am not sitting. The chair is holding me. This is the main thing. My mass is held by the chair. This is called the resistance, which is basically because of the physical comforts. The chair is giving me the physical comfort. If you remove the chair, I will fall down. Then the spiritual comfort, what we call the sattva or the consciousness of the human being. What is the consciousness? Sattva. It, we call in Sanskrit as buddhi or sattva or the essence. The human essence is in his buddhi, in his sattva. Therefore, these three qualities, there are only three qualities in human being. The spatial comfort with respect to the kinetic energy, it is called rajas. The physical comfort, which is connected with the potential energy, which is called the tamas. And spiritual comfort, which is connected with the, the consciousness, is called sattva. Rajas, tamas and sattva which are the three qualities of the human being, and these three qualities are controlled by the outside nature. These, the three qualities are controlled by the five elements which are in nature. Bhumi, Aap, Tejo, Vayu, Nabha. What we call Bhumi? Bhumi is the earth. I think you can see in the um, slide. This is the Bhumi. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah, thank you. Bhumi, then the up water, then comes the light, light and heat, then the air, the gaseous element, is not only the oxygen. There are so many other elements which are helping us, the gaseous elements. Then the last one, fifth one, the sound. There are only five sources of energy elements in the world and which are required for the human body. And this, uh, these are available in, uh, in the nature abundantly, abundantly, and which cannot be finished, which cannot be eliminated, which cannot be, what do you call, vanished. These are abundantly available. Even if there is a nuclear bomb explosion, these five elements should be still there on the earth, which we architects, coming to my profession, we architects are not making use of these five elements, the energy sources, taking them into the building and creating the comfort level for the human being. Four walls and a roof will not make architecture. <clears throat> Therefore, this, these five elements, which I mean, I have already mentioned, I'll skip this and I'll go to the next one. Well, <clears throat> Yeah, these five elements, we call them as, you know, in our own language, Pancha Mahabhutas. Mahabhuta means the physical elements. How these physical elements are within our body, which I am telling you here. See, this is the food. The food is, food is generated and collected from the earth. This is the earth. The earth is giving us the food. The food is consumed by the human being and the human being, the food will go into the gullet or throat, through the throat. It goes to the stomach. Can you see the stomach here? From the stomach, it goes to the, I mean, it forms a kind of, uh, you know, mucus, which has got the saccharine taste 
and it becomes enzymes. This enzymes and these enzymes, the enzymes will go to the duodenum with the help of samana vayu. With the help of samana vayu, that means the air element, the gaseous element will come into picture. You have already taken the earth, the food. Now the gaseous element will come into picture. Along with water, it goes to the duodenum. Then from there, it goes to the small intestines. And from small intestines, I mean, in small intestines, it becomes a chai, a juice, a juice-like thing, a kind of thick, pungent juice. And this pungent juice, which carries all these elements, the tissue forming earth elements or earth components, liquid, that is what you call the blood, producing half elements, that is liquid, heat, what we call the metabolic heat or methodic heat, heat and aura, that is light, carrying the tejas compounds with respect to the light and heat outside. And biomotor energy, that is the vayu components, which are in the, this complete juice, vayu components. Then the conscious components are nothing but the akasha or nabha or the sound. Sound is very, very important in these five elements. Why, I will tell you. <clears throat> very simple. Uh, you can ask any doctor or if any doctor is attending, he can tell me. If a newborn baby is kept for 90 days in a room well fed by mother or maybe even any vitamins etc but no sound at all in the room the 91st day when the baby comes out he will, he or she will not be able to hear or even talk of course the three months old baby may not be able to talk but cannot hear and after a few months, even baby cannot be able to talk properly. This is if there is no sound at all. Therefore, the sound is very, very important, which, which stimulates the required energy for the, uh, what do you call, the mental capacity, mental ability. That is very important. Ultimately, I would like to prove here, these five elements, which are in nature are required in the human body. And when they are required, the house is a media. It will come inside the house and then it will come into the body. And if you don't accept them in the house itself, how a person can be happy in the building? This is a very, very interesting thing where I have got more than 1000 case, case studies today. Okay. <clears throat> Next. The same material, uh, it goes into the various part of the organs of the body and uh, gives the vitality, gives the energy. I mean, it goes to the liver, liver spleen, uh, spleen and heart. And then again, heart pumps the blood to the various organs. I mean, this is the total procedure. What we call, this is called a metabolic process. This metabolic process, I wanted to prove here that these five elements are very much required which are in nature, they are abundantly available, which can be made available within the building in a proper required quantum and also in the quality wise. I'll tell you what is quality. <clears throat> I'm not skipping, but I would like to, ha. Huh. Well, now coming to the, <clears throat> Coming to the, the physical object, what we call was two. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is the physical object. I, I, I hope you, can, you all can see this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H physical object is oriented with respect to north. This is north. Then this is east. This is west and this is south. Usually, I mean, whenever we give a map, the north is very important. What we call north, can you tell me, somebody can say, 
something? What is north? What do you mean by north? I think, I think they can post their query, post the feedback. Uh, if somebody can, yeah. Yeah, ah, later I can ask them. Okay, very fine. Very fine. But anyway, now I. Because uh, they, they, they will not be able to talk, they will only be able to type actually. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Ah, but anyway, then in that case, I have to tell the answer. The north, I will tell you, in English, there is no meaning in it. None of the directions, east, west, uh, north, south, they don't have any meaning. It is very interesting to mark only north. Why? Because north has got the meaning as Uttara. Uttara in Sanskrit is the answer, the reply, the solution. And why only on in this direction? And if you see the colors what I have shown here, the violet, indigo, blue, then green, then yellow, orange and red. These are the real, the color effects you get on the physical object and into the physical object with respect to the sun rays. Why? Why this differentiation? Or why the quality differentiation in the sun's rays? Which, which is very, very interesting. When the sun's, sun's rays early in the morning, say from 6 o'clock to evening 6, these 12 hours, how they behave? How they behave? It is not just getting the light into the building. My dear friends, it is very, very interesting. You please listen to me carefully. The, the sun's ray, morning rays, the each ray has to pass through the flying humid particles. Already set, some, some of the humid particles have been set, settled on the leaves, on the tree leaves, on the bush leaves, and the maximum portion of the very fine particles will be still flying in the air, and each ray has to pass through the that humid particle, which will act as a prism, which will act as a prism. I will show you. Huh. See here, the each particle, humid particle, which will act as a prism and the sun's ray gets refracted. V, I, B, G, Y, O, R. R will go into the sky and V will touch the earth. And below the V is UV. The UV ray, which is very, very important, and why we say early morning sun we should take or we should accept or with a bare body we should accept. The reason is the UV ray with its high frequency, the red will be with lowest frequency. In fact, it is still lower. The high frequency or highest frequency UV ray will touch the skin, it will get into the skin and it forms the hormone called calciferol and that will form vitamin D in the body. There is no vitamin D in the sun because many people misinterpret. Vitamin D is formed in the body and that vitamin D which stimulates the brain first and our, the, then our total routine will start. The stimulation of the brain is very, very important by the morning rays. Therefore, always, you know, why we Sun's Namaskara or salutations, Surya Namaskara. These are, you know, only to get those rays on our body as much as possible early in the mornings. Okay. Therefore, if you consider, if you consider the, the sun coming from the east, you get the UV rays, but as the sun goes up, the humid particles, they get into the gaseous form and the sun ray becomes one. Then slowly the temperature is it starts raising. Here the morning sun ray will be cooler. Can you see? 
can you see the yes the we can see the temperature yeah. yeah yeah where the temperature is less therefore this eastern portion will get less temperature and after 12 o'clock or after 12 noon you get maximum temperature or more temperature depending on each day the sun's movement is different and therefore can we say that eastern portion the the composition of these five elements is different and the western is different whereas the western portion is hotter and eastern portion is cooler and the same way see this eastern portion b c d e f is cooler and b o f g h a is hotter you can see here this portion is cooler i have taken this diagonally i'll tell you later but in general the morning sun ray is cooler and the evening or uh, after 12 o'clock the after the noon the sun ray will become hotter and this western portion will be hotter do you agree with me yeah anyway this is not apart from the physics if you consider the sun movement what we call east to west it is not exactly east to west except in periods in a year that is march 21st and september 22nd because only on these two days he will be on the equator what we call exactly he is on the east and west otherwise he will be on the he will be in the northern hemisphere six months and other six months remaining six months he will be in the southern hemisphere what we call the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn now this portion that is h a b c d is called the tropic of cancer and d e f g h this portion we can call it as tropic of capricorn what is the difference what is the difference between tropic of cancer and the tropic of uh, tropic of capricorn when the sun is <clears throat> let us say he is from june 21st that is from the tropic of cancer june 21st he will be on the tropic of cancer from this side he starts moving towards south and he will come on this hod i mean i am considering the building located on equator this is very important you have to presume that this building is located on equator this is the equator and after september 21st he starts moving toward towards south tropic of capricorn and after september 21st that means just after the rainy season you start seeing this the sky quite clear especially when the sun is in the uh, tropic of capricorn that is december 21st the sky is completely clear temperature is least you think of these five elements the composition the temperature is least the sun's radiation is very high you may not you may not feel the heat but though it is cold but it is pricking heat therefore elders they used to say don't sit in the direct sun in in the month of december january february because you get the pricking sun it, it the sun's rays will penetrate into the skin and it can form even the cracks that the biological changes will happen the animals shed the skin especially the snakes they shed the skin and this is the this is the environment where your intake will be much less you can ask anybody who go to uh, ayappa the intake especially in the evening again the temp much food there you are not supposed to okay in the winter you are supposed to eat a lot of uh, the jaggery uh, or even uh, this sweet things and oily things anyway the the basic uh, the basic biological changes like you know you require wax to apply on the body and uh, your concentration on your studies or on your uh, 
the job or your profession will be much higher compared to the sun, compared to the uh, uh, you know when the sun is in the tropic of cancer that is when the sun after june 21st he enters he enters into the uh, what we call uttarayana or northern hemisphere he starts entering and at that time the temperature will increase in the sense it is a trapped temperature between the cloud and the earth you feel the heat it is not it is not the sun's temperature it is the heat the trapped heat will make you feel more hot therefore when the sun is in the tropic of cancer the cloud formation will be very high and therefore you feel sultry you feel you start sweating because it's a trapped heat between the clouds and the earth will make you to act like that your behavior will be different your behavior will be different the complete will be trapped by the cloud and only certain amount of heat is penetrated through the clouds and it comes up to the ground and the behavior human behavior biological behavior will be entirely different in tropic of cancer and entirely different in uh, tropic of capricorn now if you analyze only these four quadrants with respect, with respect to east west north south the directions this is east this is west this is north and this is south which create four quadrants with respect to these two partitions in a physical object called vastu a building this is one building in this building there are four walls around that is four external walls and two internal walls which create four quadrants in four quadrants these five composition the energy sources com composition five composition is all four are different i mean i have experimented without the experiment with i i mean i cannot talk when these five uh, sorry these four these four quadrants they give different composition what today the sign scientists say that the room temperature would be the same can we accept it the room temperature here will be different here will be different here will be different the fourth also will be different the humidity will be different the air component is different air velocity is different your the sound the decibel system will be different therefore these five compositions when they are different and when they are giving you the particular the uh, uh, the energy levels the person in particular quadrant his behavior also will be different the person who stays only in northeast that means his house gets only the north and east radiation with this composition his behavior has to be different because these five elements are nothing but vitamins he is surviving on them and these vitamins when they vary with respect to the each the quadrant and we call the quadrant as this north and east is called uh, ishanya b c b c d o this quadrant is called ishanya o d e f is called agneya and o f g h is called nairutya and h a b o is called vayavya every this sanskrit word has got a meaning wonderful meaning that is when we say ishanya ishanya means is not that isha means the god is there it is a godly corner therefore ishanya is not a direction it is the quadrant the same way agneya is filled with fire where the infrared rays and the uv rays will never gel together i will tell you what does it mean this e agneya that is something to do with fire it will be always jwalanta in in sanskrit we call it as jwalanta or in kannada we call it as jwalanta that means always it is uh, what do you call burning therefore why this name one is agneya under the ishanya this is vayavya something to do with the gaseous element and this is nairutya nairuti ravana was called as nairuti rakshasa that 
the rakshasiya pravarti in our own language if i want to tell you that means the devil the devilish quality they will be generated here if a person stays here whoever it may be even if he is a saint saintly person he has to become devilish or demonish therefore these quarters which give you the different composition ultimately they are controlling they are molding the behavior of the human being this is very very important which has to be studied by any architect while this the tenants or houses or whole divisions our ancestors or sthapatis the ancient sages they they even came out with nine houses when they designed the nine houses here you may ask me what mr panna do you follow the astrology no i don't believe in astrology because the the ancient uh, the sthapati themselves have said that astrology is a 50% science it is not 100% because it's only mathematics and mathematics is not science mathematics you ask anybody therefore these nine houses these nine houses which have got the different nine compositions the mercury what do we call mercury is buddha where a person stays and who gets only this radiation from the north and east in his house he will be only in acquiring the knowledge what are his qualities he will not bother about any other thing materialistic materialistic thing he will not bother he wants only acquisition of knowledge you can call it or what you call acquiring knowledge that kind of a uh, the mindset will happen here the behavior pattern will be something different the jupiter guru what do you mean by guru the guru who he, who gives you the guidance preaching he imparts his knowledge he gives away his knowledge he he shares his knowledge that kind of a personality will be developed it is the the, the characteristic of that house it is not that there is guru shukra we call them as gods therefore we have to um, respect them and uh, we have to do like this no there is no god at all god is energy if you want to have energy for teaching and the the teacher has to stay here if at all you want me to design a quarter for the teaching staff i have to apply north not a uh, lot of north light coming into their area then you can definitely produce a good teacher if the person is staying in mercury you can produce a very good student a research student then what about moon moon every day he changes his color the same thing and east and south the south and east radiation will make the man he, he will never gel with the other person in the same house or in the same division if the husband and wife are staying you can take it from me they will never gel together what we call you know in a in our simple language chhatis akda one person's face will be in one direction other other person will be in the other direction therefore the each quadrant has got the different composition of these five elements and they create a different the what do you call characteristics in human being who stays and this time period is minimum one and a half years yes to stay it is not within a day or within 24 hours then the changes will take place it takes pretty long time but there are houses you know age old houses where the same kind of characters have been carried out i can give many examples even historic okay therefore i don't want to go into all the nine houses which takes i mean uh, pretty long time i go to the next one therefore here i mean again i am coming back to the thing in nine houses ultimately these five elements bhumi aap tejo vayu nabha the composition of these elements which is very important in 
in designing the building because in a house in a house there are in a house that is a residential building there are various compartmentalized activity spaces compartmentalized activity spaces that is one area can be we call it as a living room the another area sleeping activity bedroom and there is cooking area dining area elderly persons their own bedroom area what we call the senior citizens area master bedroom area students area there is a staircase to go up and down there is a, a storeroom area utility area there are so many compartments in a house how i have taken a house is the house is the only thing where you find so many compartments but not in the industry in industry is a big hall with some administrative block and you can design it very very fast but house design is very very important now coming to the <clears throat> the the role of five elements in a house it is very very interesting and i will tell you then you will come to know that architecture is it the architecture the house with so many compartments i would like to take only two compartments or two activity configuration spaces one cooking and there is sleeping okay now let us take sleeping activity in sleeping activity or for sleeping activity these five elements bhumi aap tejo vayu nabha bhumi has been given to you because the the space as such the site as such the building as such has been given to you therefore remaining four they become five because light and heat the remaining as i told you five let us take the humidity for sleeping you require the second element humidity slightly more this i can give an example like the person staying in hot dry climate like delhi nagpur or in india i mean in bangalore i am mean, sorry in karnataka like raichur gulbarga they require a desert cooler which will throw the humidity into the room am i right and and as i told you humidity at higher level you require heat at a lower level heat at a lower level you require light for sleeping almost zero almost zero some people may put a zero bulb light it is not zero bulb i can say the fraction a fraction watt bulb you require n number of air changes in a very very smooth way on the body therefore you switch on the fan in a particular speed and the sound levels definitely has to be at a lower level you you think think of this composition with respect to the cooking activity my dear friends cooking activity is is a wonderful activity is really fantastic activity in a house which really creates life into the building the cooking activity can i say you require least amount of light you require more light there in the kitchen you require more amount of light more weightage of light a uh, wattage sorry not weightage more wattage of light you require more heat in the kitchen you require more heat in the kitchen because so far nobody in the world has sat on a sofa and did chapatis it is impossible nobody can cook with a chair on a stool you can't apply the pressure either he has to squat in a particular fashion or he has to work all the time therefore this is based with only the rajas quality the kinetic energy is very important in this cooking activity therefore in cooking activity you require more heat you require more light you require more heat and less humidity compared to the less humidity you require more number of air changes faster than bedroom because the exhaust has to be taken out therefore when these five elements vary with respect to the each activity the bedroom activity is different 
the cooking activity is different, the compositions are different. The same way every the compartments or your activity configuration, they differ in their composition. My dear friends, are we taking these into consideration while designing the building, while designing the industry, while designing the cinema theater, while designing the malls? It is not that by creating four walls and partitions with beautiful lighting, because many of the buildings, I will tell you, where <clears throat> when we did the interiors, architects are different. About nearly 18 window, it was closed because landlady wanted earlier, the golf ground is seen on that side. Therefore, I want to have a very big window. Then when after the provision of the window, the same landlady, landlady, she put one inch thick curtain because she was getting Western light. Western, I'm telling you, that light she could not bear inside the building. Therefore, she had to put that. Then what is the use? Even if you put the thing, the radiation will not stop. Then the repercussions are different. That is a different thing. Anyway, therefore, when you <coughs> analyze all the nine houses, you get the nine different composition and nine different character, which I wanted to tell you here. Okay. Therefore, if anybody wants to become a teacher, if he gets a north light here, as I've shown, I will tell you, he'll be really a very good teacher. He will impart his knowledge. He will share his knowledge with the student. You know, the dictator or, uh, you know, commander or commanding type, he can be in Rahu. He's a person who gets maximum the southwest light with infrared rays, his body cells will definitely, you know, create that kind of character. Saturn, he will never be happy in the sense you give him anything, he will be unhappy. He's a kind of, kind of creeping quality, what we call. Therefore, the each, the each house or each division, these are nothing to do with the god or goddesses, but these are nothing but the characters I mean, they depict the characters, how the man behaves if he stays in that division for a long time. Okay. Now, the each one I have, I mean, uh, you know, uh, analyzed. And next, I'm coming to the ayas. Sir, time is there now, Mr. Anil? Sir, you can go on, sir. No problem. You can go on. Yeah, time is there. No, you tell me or you can just give me a sign. I'll stop it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because question, the question and answer also has to be. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Right. No, because already I've kind of, I think nearly one hour I have covered. Yeah. One hour you have covered. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now these are ayas. What is aya? Aya is nothing but a proportion. Very, very interesting thing. Well, I will tell you if a person goes into the cinema theater, a single person, he goes into the cinema theater and when the interval lights would be on, he suddenly finds that he is alone. What does he feel? He gets scared to some extent or for a short time. Suddenly, one person is there, he gets scared. Therefore, there is it's called the anthropometrics come into the way. What should be the personal space for each activity, for various activities that the ayas have been created? I mean, to what extent our people have really been gone and studied? Fantastic. I mean, uh, we can't simply um, neglect them. This, this aya, hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. No, no, because Mr. Anil, I, I can't see you. That is the reason. Yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah. Ah, therefore, these IRs are nothing but the various proportions for various activities. For various activities. If somebody wants to attain, uh, what do you call, um, uh, Nirvana or Siddhartha, what we call, you, with one is to one proportion, with one is to one proportion, and with only the top opening, only with the top opening, that is a fantastic one. 
for that. But if somebody wants to have the materialistic approach, on four sides you can have the opening with a square one is to one of uh, the aya, and in a house you can create like this with four openings, and he can have he can achieve everything. But the windows have to be proportionate to the floor area. That I mean you can go in detail later. Therefore, this way there are totally totally eight ayas. And the well, one by one, I will tell you. Uh, I don't want to go very much in detail. The first one is called Dhaja Aya. The second is called Duma Aya. Third is Simha Aya. Fourth is Shwana Aya. Fifth is Rishabh. Sixth is Khara. Khara means donkey. The person in this Aya he will be working without expecting much and he may not give you the quality work. Whereas Hasti is very interesting. I would like to talk a few words about this. The Hasti Aya 1 is to 1.66. 1 is to 1.66 is called a golden rectangle. This was achieved almost 2000 years back in our Indian architecture. And the if anybody goes to Badami, Patarkal, Ayole, or even Ajanta Elora, this 1 is to 1.66 Aya is very, very common, the golden rectangle. This was invented recently. We call that as an invention. Recently by P.H.I. Fia, the scientist who was an artist, basically. He was not a scientist. He was an artist. He found out 1 is to 1.66 is the golden rectangle. But our people, when they have, I mean, already invented 2,000 years back, we don't worship them. We don't even respect them. Anyway, he's a Western person and we have to respect. That is in our blood. Now going to the next. The 1 is to 1.77. This is meant for basically the group or the mass or any, you know, the Kalyana Mandapam or your Samudaya Bhavana, these things for 1 is to 1.7, 1 is to 1.77. Therefore, the ayas also, they have named it in such a way where that efficiency, that activity efficiency has to be boosted up. So next is alindas. <clears throat> this is a very, very interesting thing. Alinda means the openings for the house. In, in some cases, the openings will be only one side or two sides, three sides, all four sides. You can just see the next one. And I've given the names. And I don't want to take much time because it requires a lot of time to explain. But anyway, the names have been given. You can just go through the names and you'll understand. Now, this Aya or Alinda, sorry, this Alinda is called Vijaya, Vijaya Alinda, which has got four sides opening. I not mentioned the proportion here, but this requires a particular proportion. And Second one is dhanya. Dhanya means, <coughs> I mean, he will never be uh, uh, short of the material, but a lot of material will be there. He will not be very rich, but he will be contented. That is called dhanya. The next, durmukha. See, this is very, very interesting. Durmukha, that means always his face will be uh, like a Rakshasa or uh, people don't like his the facial expression, expression itself. He, I mean, you can call him as a depressed person. Depressed person. That's if the south is opening, only the south light, south radiation, if the house is getting, the people will be depressed throughout their life. As long as they are going to stay in that house, they'll be depressed. You can see if that is only the south light. It should not be, a, it should not have any other combination light. When the south is exactly perpendicular to this, if there is any at an angle, then the, uh, there is a lot of variation. I will tell you that also next. The next ayah is khara. Khara means donkey. The person in this house with this opening will have only, will have to only work here and north and east and south are completely closed. 
the west opening is nothing but the khara the donkey work not bull work bull work is quality work that is called vrishaba this khara means he without any expectation he has to very work hard therefore he also will not be very happy the next is the preceptor or guru that is when the north is opening what we call uttara the person he will go on preaching you guiding you very nicely he will be a good margadarshi in the life and this kind of the quality if anybody wants to achieve the north light is a must the next is manorama that means he will be always happy whether he gets money or not he will be always i mean completely contented that is when the north and east light is open he will be very much contented we is called manorama the next is akranda the lamented always you know i mean he will be crying the south and east always he will be crying the short of money the health will not be very good uh, i mean if the in my case studies uh, which i would like to rather put forward before you if the south and east opening is more than 60% of the floor area he is bound to get the health problems first is the bp next is the heart and the next is ugra that is west and south is open what we call pitrasthana or commanding nature ugra he will be very much uh, aggressive very much aggressive if the west and south open and i can give scientific reasons why it happens this gets the maximum of south and west rays which will expand us to act like that the opposite direction what we call the north and east that is manorama the north and east where you get the uv rays maximum and it will keep you cool and in among the four direction i mean the four quadrants the northeast is the coldest zone in the coldest zone the life is more do you agree with me in the refrigerator you keep the fruits you keep the milk where the the metabolic rate it comes down everything gets slowed down the life is more therefore the ishanya corner it is called the longevity of the life the people staying in northeast corner definitely their life is more than 75 years guarantee and they even the what do you call attacking uh, the uh, you know health problems also will be very very least or i can say it's almost zero <clears throat> coming to the the tenth one what we call nanda or ananda that means happiness he the person in north and west will be very happy i mean he he will have his own world he will not mix directly with everybody he will have his own world i mean he will be listening to his music he will be uh, participating in his own gangs and he is a very good leader also i mean especially with physical uh, uh, qualities he prepares his own gang mixing up with the family members is little bit least the next is kanta that is pleasing he will be very happy with east and west light now you may ask me sir is it possible to get the light like this only the opposite direction yes if you go to bombay i will tell you there are certain houses from one end to the other end only the two sides are open apartments i am talking about apartments are open where you get the east or west light and where you you can find this qualities this vipula that is where north and south are open in particular proportion vipula means they get sufficient they get sufficient abundant and the other one is dhanata that is healthy where north and east and south all the three are open in a particular proportion therefore these proportions if you this quadrant will give you the wealth and this is kshaya when there is a east and west opening along with south east south and west whatever you have already you have achieved earned there will be a loss loss of even sometimes the mental ability also people may become 
or what you call this uh, um, the different ailments where you your memory is lost uh, uh, or sometimes even parkinson or uh, yeah alzheimer 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 all these things are basically what i found in my case studies is west south and east are open and here it is called aya this is kshaya means losing aya means collection conservation accumulation that is north west and south are open north west and south are open this when this house make you to collect whether you are happy or not is different the collection is will be differently there he will go on collecting the last one is called sumukha where west north and east are open cheerful always happy therefore these composition of five elements which create which molds our character is the main crux of vastu shastra which is very much required what you want to achieve whether you want to achieve the guru quality whether you want to achieve the buddha quality or whether you want to achieve rahu quality ketu quality it all depends on how much you want to get the radiation in your building or in your house <clears throat> now the the color plays an important role in architecture i am talking about the internal color outside color you can have anything you can have anything but internal colors they play important role for example if i want to increase the buddhi of a student i got plenty of cases where the student was part i mean uh, scoring only between 35 to 40 sometimes even less than 35 also but we made him to go up to 85 to 88 i got the case studies i'll give one very fine example <clears throat> in bangalore from sadashivnagar i got a phone call saying that we would like to have a consultation i went there the i mean the patient he had constructed he had purchased sorry he had purchased a beautiful building very big building in sadashivnagar very posh area elite class area very nice building to look at it was a really excellent building spending more than a crore and he created in that a special room for his son who came from ramakrishna mission mysore who had scored 98% in puc 2 and after scoring 98% he had got the admission in all the colleges the colleges invited him you please come to my college my college select your subject and ultimately he joined rv college in bangalore rb institute of engineering <clears throat> then after one year that is after two semester third semester his father came to me mr apna i want to have a consultation and i said okay we went there and uh, i saw the complete thing and i told the parents i would like to have the discussion with the boy only in confidence in privacy then when i i mean i was discussing with him i asked him first question did you try to commit suicide he got aghasted and he suddenly asked me the next question did his parents told me i said no i don't know anything about your uh, house first time i am coming you know i had not met your parents also first time i am meeting you yes, know or not you please try you please tell me because it was in southeast where his mind was not getting the concentration he had already failed in the one semester completely the third semester he could not pass all the subjects but because he was carried over he was in the fourth semester the student who had scored 98% is it possible to fail in all the subjects the parents even put the private detective to investigate whether his pay uh, friend i mean he has got a very bad friends the friends might be create, you know, because of friends this situation might arrive or he might have copied in uh, ramakrishna mission mysore and got 98% no 
he had really scored well because when i interviewed him very intelligent boy but why he scored so less it is only the room ultimately he said uncle i don't want to stay in this house i said why why do you want to say this house no in this room then we changed the direction the light direction in the same room we put the mirrors actual light we made to enter into the building and you may not believe ultimately he stood the gold medalist in the final semester what i mean to say is we are the slaves of the nature we are the slaves we are molded according to the environment what we get now it is up to us to take our environment but since we don't know we are common people we go to the architects as doctor to get the vitamins from them what vitamins we require that he has to study the family requirements he has to take the family history whether they rajas tatva and based on that he has to design the building and therefore this is a fantastic the arc what you call the scientific architecture which our ancient people had already they have recorded fantastic here i would like to mention one very great scientist varaha mihir he has done uh, he has written the book called brahat samhita very interesting thing about him is he was in ujjain vikramaditya time he was one of the navaratnas of the he was what do you call um, Uh, that uh, you know eight people about the eight vidwans he was one of the ashtak pradha ashtak pradhan and this gentleman stayed about uh, 18 kilometers away i mean about nearly uh, i think 11 miles 11 miles away from ujjain i had been to his place in the sense that gaon that village now is kathwa is called kathwa which lies exactly on the karkavratta tropic of cancer which is not marked on the earth he calculated mathematically astronomically and located his house there which gave him the additional or value addition of his knowledge and he has created a brahat samhita i think with this sir with your kind permission can i stop it here sir you can no for so many so many information i mean i can definitely i am ready to share but it's a question okay. of time okay i think we can have one more series sir because of uh, the the thing can we have one more talk some other day yeah yeah some uh, definitely we will definitely because it is my in, from my side it is incomplete i am telling you okay. very quickly yeah. Yeah, yeah so we can have a continuation of this yeah, because okay. based on this we can have a continuation of uh, one more lecture yeah. some other day yeah uh, where we can have it in the morning session also because oh. uh, or morning or evening session whichever way Right. either after 6 or something like that so that yeah. you know we can continue this because this is very interesting because uh, as yeah. you rightly said uh, this is a science which needs to be understood yes yes it has to be properly yeah yeah definitely because as explained by you in terms of proportion in terms of openings in the building yes. Yes. Uh, which has an effect on overall being of the human beings so i right. think uh, that is very important with the last slide i would like to complete yeah. Please. with the last Please. slide yeah yeah ha ah, okay this is the last but one side i mean with this definitely i mean you know ah <clears throat> uh, many many of the you know listeners and viewers i think you would have gone through some of the the so called vastu books and this particular building what i am showing you which is in hyderabad where every every third person he talks about the vastu adu undi adu vaddu adu ledu oh my god that is too much in hyderabad especially vastu i don't know why whereas this particular building which is facing east on this side then this is the north sorry the north is hiding here this is the road and road is hitting the building which is a bad science or bad omen as per the today's vastu pandits where we did the building this is the the road hitting the building and here the site is is called vagramukhi again it is a bad omen as per the the so called vastu pandits 
and the bore well is in southwest here. If you see the section from east towards the south and southwest, the land is sloping. That means again it's a bad omen. With this situation, Mr. Gaura Srinivas of this site owner, he came to us, he said, Mr. Prana, whether I should sell the site or whether I should consult. I told him, Vastu Shastra is not for the site, first thing. It is for the Vastu what you are going to construct there, that is Vastu Shastra. The application of Vastu science is only for the building. It is only for the place where a person is going to stay there. And after this clarification, you may not believe, he didn't even look back, looked back and he constructed the building, still it is existing, with this northeast extension. Extension of the building, nothing to do with the site. And with this, we did the building. Today, I am telling you, he is very happy with his three sons, staying with him only in this building with three floors. He said, oh, the kitchen is only one, sir. Even with three plus one, four families, the kitchen is only one. Everyone will come down to the dining hall and eat their food and go to sleep in their respective bedrooms. But it is only one family with one company and the now companies have got different branches and everyone is leading the branch. The most, uh, what do you call, the, uh, the comfortable and peace of mind, what I can see in this family is fantastic. Now, Mr. Srinivas, I asked him, you tell me, what is your happiness rate? When I asked him, he said, I don't know what is happiness rate, but I'm very, very happy. When my children are, children and my daughters-in-law, they are with me, what else you want? I can see every day my grandchildren. They are not away from me at all. Even if they are away, sometimes, but I'll tell you, the affinity is more. It is not less, okay? And the next last one, which I would like to show you, the architecture in nature. The architecture in nature, this is a fantastic one. One second. Huh? Hmm. Okay. This architecture, <clears throat> well, the what you call this as anthill. It has got a lot of openings on the top, on the sides. Not a single drop of water, even in stormy weather, will not enter into their what do you call living areas or bedroom areas. Some over the passage, the water will come out, and this will the, the termites will build this what do you call the ant hill only wherever there is a water source, or what we call if you dig a bore, you are bound to get very good water at a high level. Thirdly, whatever it stores the grain for six months or maybe at least four to five months for the rainy season, because rainy season it can't go out and collect the food, the grains will never compose or never decompose, never germinate. This is a very interesting character. And in any kind of stormy weather, this will not fall down. The concrete structure designed by architects will fall down, but this will not fall down. No seepage. And very, very important thing is, the inside temperature is less than half of outside temperature. The inside temperature in their living area, if you put a thermometer, the mercury, it will stay down. It will not increase. It is less than half of the outside temperature, which is very, very interesting. Therefore, this, the architecture, this, uh, what do you call, the nature itself is uh, guiding us and giving us so much of information about architecture, but we have not yet even come to the, you know, what I can say, 50% of that level. Anyway, with this, I would like to thank you, uh, one and all, all my viewers. And again, the Ramco Cement people, all the people, all the managers, GMs, and everyone. Uh, Mr. Anil, I'm really thank you. Uh, I'm thankful to you all. Thank you very much. And I say.
whatever is going to be good, checking with meat and continue the thing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, uh, you have given a very good message of how uh, we should learn from nature and how to uh, bring nature into our uh, building inside that, all the Panchabhutas. I mean, that was a very interesting uh, talk and uh, there is no kind of superstition involved in this, but there is always a science involved in all of this. I think that is very important. That was a very good message that was given by you. Uh, can we take a couple of questions, sir? Uh, because... Uh, oh, please. And before this, I would like to ask one question, only one question. Uh, right. To my viewers, viewers uh, my dear friends, do you think what I told you is a little bit of stuff as architecture? I think, uh, uh, can we have some responses, please, uh, to the question, is there any kind of architecture in whatever you said, is it not? That's what you are. Is there any science in that? Okay, is there any science in that? That is, uh, what about the responses from the audience? Yes, there is a lot of. Yes, we loved the talk. Uh, that is a message that is coming, and uh, most of them are responding with a. Either, with either a reply you say saying yes. Or no. Yeah, they have they have replied with an S. There is a lot of science in oh. what you have said. Good, good, good. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I think that is. Uh, so ah, some okay. of the questions that uh, yeah. In fact, uh, what this is yeah. In most of the cases, the north axis will not be straight, but it will be inclined. In such a cases, what will happen? You know, that is the kind of question that has been asked. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would, I would like to answer the question. That yeah. means if the land is sloping, am I okay. right? Yeah. Yes. If the land is sloping, what to do? Even if the land is sloping, ultimately it is these five elements make inside the building is important. It has nothing to do with the slope, whether east to west, west to east, north to south, south to north, any, anything. I mean, a, a, any kind of slope. For example, I will tell you. Because in the recent books, it is mentioned that if the west, the land is sloping west, westerly, or land is sloping towards south, they are not good. What does it mean? See, the application is for the building. Therefore, while applying the Vastu Shastra for the building, we'll definitely take care how much you get the radiation from the west or south. And accordingly, we can definitely design the building. We have designed buildings in Mahalakshmi layout, which are completely westerly slopes. And they are flourishing. They have got fantastic industries in uh, Pindia. They are flourishing. They are prospering. I mean, I can give the addresses. They can go and even uh, meet them. Yeah, yeah. Health so wise, that yeah. The studies which you have, I think it's it's a kind of evidence that you know it yes, works. Yes, yes, yeah. And uh, another question is: some part of the house will be at southwest. So, is there any problem in that? No, some part of the house no, will I be in the southwest direction. No, it's okay. So what? I mean, the direction here for the building only I have to take. And if, okay. yeah, if the southwest radiation is very high compared to the northeast or north or any other directions, okay. then if it is creating a problem, that can be rectified. That can okay. be rectified. I mean, so there is a solution for everything. That means, you know, yes. even as you rightly showed the last slide in which, you know, uh, the site was not all right, but the construction yes. was made appropriate to yes, that. Exactly. 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 Uh, I mean, ready means I'll tell you. Uh, I mean, not that to boost myself. The we have revived many sick industries. Okay. Uh, yeah, many sick industries because ultimately, may, many people say no that MD, you know, somehow he borrowed the money, he ran away. No, it is totally wrong because while starting the business, starting the industry, nobody's intention would be like that. He wants True. to create some employment. Yeah. He wants to take out. He wants to produce something. That intention cannot be lost suddenly. But if the environment doesn't cope up with him, or if the environment doesn't help him cooperate with him, then only he'll be in trouble. Okay. Yeah. Another question is that regarding mirror image flats in a building, will it uh, will be will it not be okay for anyone? No. Mirror image of flat. Mirror, mirror, mirror image uh, villas especially. Okay. They are not correct planning. That is not advisable, is it not? It's not advice. No, mirror image, mirror image, if you can create courtyard and try to get the different okay. directional light, it is possible. I mean, the methodology is different. The designing system itself is different. But if you just say mirror image with a common wall, it is not correct. You showed some colors, no, like Vibgior and all that. Is there any, is it, is it some kind of color therapy is one of the participants? Exactly. exactly. I didn't go in detail. 
the okay. each color each color respects the chakra in the body and according okay. we have to uh, uh, you know we have to motivate the occupant supposing if there is a student who is not studying well you just put little little bit of bluish and greenish two colors in on two walls i will tell you the motivation will be fantastic very yeah. very high very high bluish and, and greenish colors is it ah uh, uh, but when i say blue and green not dark ones it's only uh, hardly about between uh, 8 to 10% in white okay yeah it's bluish and greenish okay and the question is that does the diagonal spaces have any kind of effect to the human thoughts uh, diagonal no, no, diagonal spaces that is what the question is being asked one of the participants is diagonal spaces i do not know what he meant by that no, but I, his question says uh, does diagonal spaces have any kind of effect to the human thoughts no, maybe he would be, be talking about some diagonal thing i think rather than having a kind of uh, right angle no, thing if there no, is any kind of yeah, diagonal yeah i think the i mean the, the person who has given the i mean uh, uh, the who has asked the question does he does he mean by the triangular spaces uh is it uh, mr architect uh, abhishek wants is it uh, does it does he mean, uh, do you mean the arch tri triangular spaces is it, it could mean i think uh, yeah i think that is what he meant like a diamond oriented no 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 and or does he mean the directional or diagonal that means yes. at an angle correct yeah then then angular which i showed you the 16 uh, uh, the alindas accordingly we can definitely plan like three side perpendicular and one side skewed oh it's possible no he, is he talking about the site or the building uh i think it's uh, the site as well as building how uh, does it differ site, in the both cases three side is perpendicular and one side is skewed yeah it affects right. yeah if he is if he is talking about the site the okay. site can be in any direction in any shape and any slope okay what about the building uh, building building cannot be skewed okay i mean skew in the sense either it will be triangular okay yeah skew is something different that's why i mean i, I mean uh, if the building is skewed okay the building also if it is skewed it can be designed with respect to the north orientation the various activities it is possible we have done in a uh, triangular space a very uh, here only in some um, in your uh, what you call dollars colony in bangalore so even if the site is having some kind of uh, uh, negative this thing it can be made uh, it can be rectified through the spacious this thing of the buildings that's what you meant no? mr mr anil one thing here i would like to differ with the question there okay. is no negativity there is no positivity right. the energy is one okay the energy is one there is no negative energy there is no positive energy how these pandits are fooling the people there is a negative energy if a person gets a giddiness and falls down hello hello yes yes we are able to hear you sir yes. some disturbance in the sound yeah 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 hello yes sir we are able to hear you yes yeah. go on sir yeah see the energy is one okay. if a person gets giddiness and he falls down okay you give him a glass of water to energize him true not bucket full of water or not just one drop of water one spoon of water okay very small amount that is called the energy there is no positive energy there, there is no negative energy i will tell you some of the pandits will come and tell you why i am calling this a scientific analogy in architecture the reason is there is a real science the way these vastu pandits they are coming and telling that is sir if you have the basement you will straight away go down go down means you lose everything why how we have created so many basements okay people are flourishing okay. the same way what he is saying the positive energy or positive energy of the site or negative energy site can be made positive it is totally wrong there is no positive or negative energy in the site the site has got all the energies only okay. thing we have to make use of no no because when you said that southwest is bad hmm. and does it mean any kind of uh, negative connotation that was under clarification by mr kumar ramurthy is bad 
I never seen. Okay. Southwest definitely required because for any institution, there will be only one the commanding person. If you take, yeah, even if you take any house or if you take any school or if you take any college, there will be only one principal or MD, whoever it may be. Okay. One person. The same way, even in the house, the southwest, the master bedroom, what we call, is a pitrasthana, and only one person, either he or she, has to command the whole institution. Therefore, there is no, nothing, I never said southwest is bad. I never said southeast is bad. No. Now, what you want to put there, it's up to you. The activity versus the direction is very exactly, important. Exactly, exactly. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a very interesting uh, talk by you, architect Tapanna, sir, uh, because I, I think most of the uh, viewers have uh, uh, complimented on this one. And I am sure that we will have a part two series of this uh, okay. because, you know, we will have, uh, uh, we will give more time and we will also okay. mention in the invitation also uh, sufficient yeah. time so that they can plan accordingly. And, you know, only those who are interested can join us for that Thank second you. part. Right, right, right. Thank you okay. so much, sir. Thank you for joining us and for right. sparing your time along with us. I'm sure that uh, this knowledge will be very useful to all of us. Okay. And uh, with all the feedback, we will be, uh, be in touch with you and we will organize a second series on this. Sir. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So we sign off from today's webinar. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, you wanted to ask me something? Uh, then they, I